In this video, I'm going to look at the Sony 711B3 chassis. We're going to tear down the loading assembly and time the main and sub threading rings as well as take apart and retime the front loading mechanism and take a look at this last of the Sony beta chassis. What we're looking at here is probably the last, I think this was the last uh, beta uh, chassis that Sony produced. This one was what they called the plungerless mechanism. So it, it got rid of the solenoid. The solenoid was a problem area on some of them. And this one went to a more um, conventional design. It used a motor or used a rotary encoder switch to load and unload the tape, which is a switch that sometimes gets dirty. So on this video, we're gonna look at the maintenance of this particular chassis. And this machine doesn't have anything wrong with it. So we're gonna pull this thing apart and just take a look at the, uh, the way the thing works. And I'll take out this, uh, I'm gonna undo these wires here first of all. I'll take out the, uh, the loading motor. And we'll take a look underneath here to see how this one works. And I'll take the front loading mechanism apart just to show you guys what goes on on this particular machine. So I'm just going to remove my wires here from the tie down and then we can take out a couple screws that hold the loading motor in place. I believe there's just two of them. And then there's a catch here that comes, you have to release. A little catch. And then this whole assembly just lifts up and out of the way. And you'll see that there is a mount switch on this one, which was something that most beta machines did not have. So this mode switch needs to be cleaned, just like any of the uh, rotary encoders. They do get gummed up, and it causes this machine to do weird things. And this machine is doing those weird things. Every so often it'll stick and I have to kind of give it a gentle push. The uh, mode switch has, if you look on here, it's, it's home position, it's ejected position. It lines up with a little arrow here. The pin lines up with a little arrow. So, you know where it goes. Unlike other mode switches that you can simply take apart and clean the contacts, this one here it's fused together. So taking this one apart is not going to really be an option. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here with some cleaner and I'm just going to try and flush some cleaner into this and get enough cleaner in between the little circuit board here which has got the contacts on it and the board there to uh, hopefully clean it. That should get cleaner into that switch. I'll just spin it around a bit. And put it back in the home position. Now this machine here uses a cam to engage the pinch roller. So it's all done by the motor. So as it's loading and unloading, it turns this cam gear, which will, through the action of this cam, will actually load and unload the pinch roller. And it turns the mechanism to thread and unthread the, the uh, tape. Now there are a couple gears on this one, so, so timing is kind of critical on this one. There are timing points too, there are timing marks on these gears, so you got to make sure if you take this mechanism apart that you line up the gear. But if you take this apart and you don't get the alignment correct, it's not going to thread correctly. Because one gear pulls 
as you can see, one gear pulls the one gear pulls the, the pinch roller out this way, and the other gear turns the other shuttle block and the guides the opposite direction. So there are timing marks that have to be uh, observed when you are working on this mechanism. back on like that. And then as I drop the loading motor back in place I have to make sure that I pull the pitch roller back like that. I have to compress the spring so that it's in the fully unloaded position before I put the gear back together. lock it in place and drop that down. That, that holds it in place. And as you can see, it works. My alignment is correct. Now, if on the other hand I were to release this cog and back the other gear back here so that this wasn't making wasn't making wasn't locking all the way in, we'd end up with an alignment problem. But there are there are timing marks that you can line up. Now you might wonder what is the correct loading uh, mark? Well, there's a hole right down here, and if you advance the guide enough you'll see that it will line up with a hole that is the starting point so that's the hole you want to align to uh, I don't believe that's the one <laughs> it's this one here if you're back too far it's not going to load properly you'll start the alignment at that point that's the unloaded point with your tape guide just underneath the, uh, the cover plate here and then when you pull the other guide back you pull this one back and you compress the spring so that it lifts up the little lever here in front of the uh, tape end sensor because that's how the machine knows that it's completed its unloading cycle right if that's not in place it's not going to work so when you put the gear assembly in you pull that in place so I've got my mode switch in place and it's it's locked in and then we drop the loading motor assembly back into place and now I just pull the guide back and drop the loading motor down. Lock it into place. There. Now we're in place. And my little bar here is up. And we have a picture. Those are drop loads. This tape is very old. Okay, that's that's how you do the mechanical alignment of this chassis. Okay, I think now what we'll do on this one is I'll take the front loading mechanism apart so you guys can see how the front loader works on this particular one because the front loader is always a part that causes grief. People tend to break the gears on them. So I'll pull the front panel off this thing. Okay, front panel's off. Front loader comes off quite easy. There's just four screws 
that hold it in place. Now remember this one does have its own loading motor on it. So the four screws are marked with an arrow. At least these two ones on the front are. And the two in the back. Remove the screws and the whole front loading assembly just lifts right out. And this one is attached to the machine. There is a plug on the other end. Front loader is out of the way. VCR is out of the way. Now we can concentrate on taking this thing apart. So the front loader on this unit is uh, pretty simple. I mean most of these betas were, were pretty simple. You've got your two loading gears, one on either side. And over here you've got a mechanism that's just held in place by plastic catches. So if we pop this catch out of the way here. Okay, release these catches here. One on the top there and uh, one on the bottom. And that just comes off like that. And basically you've got a couple of gears. You've got a worm gear here, which can just lift right out. Now this has got timing marks on it, so you have to be careful. It is a half gear, right? And then there's a half gear here that loads the mechanism. And this gear, when it goes in, there's an alignment hole that lines up right on the bottom down here, and there's a hole right in the bottom here of the gear. So when you put it on, in the ejected position, those holes line up with each other. You can see through the two holes here. You can see my finger in behind the hole. So that is the ejected position. And this mechanism is kind of nice because I can operate this thing like this with it apart. So if I push the tape in, I have to release the little latch up top here, which is what locks the tape so that it won't push in until there's a tape in it. So if I push down that little lever, now I can operate the mechanism. And I could turn this gear by hand. And you can see the way that the gears operate. And it goes down just like that and locks in place. And to eject, if I turn the gear the opposite way, it will catch and bring the cassette basket back up. Just like that. If we remove the gear, now we can see that this gear has two gears on it. There's a front and a rear gear and if we separate the two of them, well, there's a lever on here, so it's going to make it difficult to separate it unless I push the mechanism down. So let's release the catch so I can push the mechanism forward. Now you can see that there's a double gear here. This front piece can come off and reveal in behind there, there's another gear, right? And these two gears are actually, they're both, they're both clutched into this half gear that drives the half shaft to the other side. It's got a half cog on it. So it's not a full, it's not a full gear. It doesn't have teeth all the way around. It's got teeth around th about three quarters of the, the gear. There are marks that indicate when you are in the ejected position and when you are down. There's a mark right over here that lines up with, there should be another mark on the other gear. But anyway, when it's ejected, it's back like that. There's a mark right there. It, it points at the first tooth. And on the other side here, there'll be another one. The first te two teeth have a little, little mark on them that, that point to each other. That's when you're in ejected mode. Now we're going to take the basket down again so that I can put the other half gear back on. So we take the basket down and then I drop the other half gear in place. The other half gear we call it a half gear because it's only got teeth on half of it. The other half gear goes in place and it drops in place Is it, uh, just like this I believe. There's, the, the, there's a hole here in this gear and there's a hole here in this gear here. You can see the hole. This hole lines up over top of the other hole. So you just turn the, put them in phase until the two gears line up and then you can drop it in just like that. And then when you raise it up, it ejects just like that. 
Now, in the ejected mode, I can line up this gear with the hole there. Line it up, drop it in place, voila, the alignment is done. And then I can put this cover back on. Cover locks in place, there's a couple catches on the back side here. They just lock in place there and a couple catches on the front. And it lines up with some pins. You just snap it together just like that. And the unit is back together. Very, very simple design. So as you can see, if I press down the, the tape release, the, the lock that stops this mechanism from going in, we start the loading cycle. The loading gear pulls the tape down, locks it in place, just kicks it back up like that. Very simple mechanism. Let's put it back in the machine and we'll test the machine out and make sure that everything works and uh, that will then end this little quick tutorial. Also remember there are two switches right here, there are two pin switches. Cassette down and record lockout. So when the cassette goes down, that switch is what tells the mechanism, tells the machine that there's a tape actually in the machine and it can start its loading cycle. The other one is to tell it if the uh, tape tab has been broken off so that you don't accidentally record over something. So we'll stuff the wire in there, drop the front loading mechanism in place, it just drops in place just like that. Four screws hold it in place, very simple, very clean design. I wish all front loaders were simple like this. And of course it works. No question. Let's get the front back on this machine. The front panel goes on pretty simple. Just slide it in place and snap it on. A couple of those screws back in the front of it. And it's ready to have the top put back on it. Two screws on the circuit board, two screws on the bottom. And then the top goes back on and this machine goes back into my collection because this is actually one of my working machines that I use for tape conversions. Okay, machine's back, going back together. Got two more screws to go in the bottom here. There you go. That's a scratch in the tape, by the way. That line you see there, that's a scratch. You can actually see the scratch on the top edge here. See the scratch? Right there, that's a scratch in the tape and that's what's causing that line. The picture scans from the bottom to the top, the way that the tape is threaded. The video track starts at the bottom edge of the tape and comes across in a diagonal pattern towards the top. And there's a little scratch, you can see it right there. And that's what's causing that line in the picture. Doesn't take much to damage the videotape. Hope you enjoyed this video looking at uh, how to mechanically align one of these. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you soon in another one. And I mean real soon. I'll be doing a few over the next couple days. Bye for now.